Welcome back to another edition of the Post Game Podcast. I'm here with Corey Smith here with Michael Clark, football analyst for Pack Pride. Whew, that was a, uh, a wild game for NC State. Felt like they were completely out of it there in you know the third quarter. 21 to three deficit. NC State finds a way to come back, uh, win the game 22 to 21. Uh, not the, not the way you wanted it to play out completely, but man, that was a a really good comeback win for NC State, Michael. Your thoughts before we jump into this thing, man. Man, it couldn't have been any uglier in the first, you know, half. And and then it just went on and on. And, and you keep you thought, I mean, I thought at 21, what, 21-3, I thought the game was, you know, I thought it was over. Um, yeah. But you've got to credit this team. I mean, this would have been a disastrous loss if they were to drop this game to Virginia Tech. And first credit Virginia Tech, they played hard. Um, they came out aggressive in the second half and knocked State back on their heels. But what can you say? I mean, it starts with MJ Morris. I mean, huge kind of welcome to college football for him. Um, I know we'll get more in depth with that, so I, I'll let you do the intro and everything you need to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, before we really get things started, I want to remind our listeners, as always, to visit our iTunes and Google Play Store. Get us a rating if you enjoy the podcast. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube Live or you're watching us on the YouTube video that we put out later. Um, I also put it on Facebook and, and Twitter as well, so you can watch there. But make sure to give us a like and subscribe on, on YouTube as well so that you can get these all the time. Uh, whenever we go live, we do them every Monday. We also do them every post-game podcast too. Uh, but also make sure to check out all of Pack Pride's coverage throughout the rest of football season and basketball offseason. $1 for the first month or 30% off uh, when you sign up now for one year. Head over to packpride.com to find out more about becoming a premium subscriber. So, Michael, uh, you know, I'm looking at the comments here. Someone said, uh, one heck of a game. I'm proud of the team all around. Morris makes me feel like, feel more confident moving forward. Uh, Thomas Bros and Houston deserve a huge praise. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of people saying stuff about uh, Terrell Timmons after that game uh, said, uh, good win. MJ Morris looked more confident than Leary had all year. I don't know about that, but um, you know, it did. He did look a lot more confident once he got uh, a little bit of time to actually throw the ball. Um, you know, Michael. I guess we'll start with there, though. I mean, you know, we'll start. We always start on offensive side of the football. Your thoughts on on MJ Morris's performance? Obviously, he's not named the starter. Uh, Jack Chambers gets that, but MJ Morris gets to start in the second half after a good first half. I believe it was uh, three. I think four or five in the first half. Almost threw an interception in the end zone, but. Uh, that one gets batted down. Your your thoughts on on his performance as a whole, but also just the way his gritty play down the stretch to end up leading NC State to a win. Well, we weren't we don't have practice uh, practice access, so it's tough for us to kind of get inside the minds of the coaches. But I, I thought you should have gone with him from the beginning. I know you were kind of on the same page. Um, I mean, you had heard a lot, and you'd shared a lot with me from from what you heard behind the scenes too, just about how good he's been. Oh so yeah, far, right? he's the he's. You know, by all accounts, the real deal. And I think he showed that tonight. Just going back to fall camp, you heard the whispers of just how quickly he was picking things up, you know, how impressed Tim Beck was. Not just Tim Beck, but his teammates. Just how smart the kid is. Um, just really gifted uh, athletically. Has a great arm as well. Uh, the poise and composure he showed tonight, the moment wasn't too big for him. You know, it's a pretty national, uh, national TV game. He hangs in there, and uh, Tim Beck finally you know, just kind of turned it loose. And I think that's got to be the approach for NC State going forward. Nothing against Jack Chambers. We knew what he was going into this game, an average passer at best, limited physically. Uh, and, you know, he did what he could do at Syracuse. But uh, for, if NC State's going to be successful, it's going to be with MJ Morris. So I think going forward, some may disagree. I think you pass to set up the run. Uh, the run game – 34 for 60. I know that's adjusted with sack yardage and all that, but it hasn't been there all year. It wasn't there last year. I think you have to become a more aggressive passing team, um, and and I think a lot of people would agree. Uh, he does give you an element with his legs that I think is something, uh, not just as a runner to you know as a runner, but to extend plays is really big. Um, so I can't say enough positive stuff about him. I mean, the kid is a true freshman, didn't get to campus until, I believe, May or June. So, look at the progress he's made, and you know, he's the quarterback of the future, in my opinion. Yeah, and I got another one here from John Woods. He said, uh, 
He said Timmons seems to like the deep seems like the deep threat we need for the underneath routes to open up. So nice to see Tim Beck take the training wheels off and open up the playbook. Yeah, you know, one thing about it, I think a lot of people going into the year expected Anthony Smith to be that. You know, obviously he's had surgery. He's not going to be uh, back for the remainder of the season. Um, so we'll see, you know, who emerges really as the deep threat. And it looked like, you know, Timmons uh, was that guy tonight. Terrell Timmons, obviously a true freshman. A lot of passes from a true freshman to a true freshman and MJ Morris, one of which was would have been a huge catch. He ended up dropping it, but uh, it was a really tough play. I mean, your, your thoughts on the passing game, too, because it was a, a hell of an effort tonight uh, by, you know, I, I, gosh, I'm blanking here. I'm trying to get back to the stats. Uh, Thayer Thomas had 10 receptions for 118 yards and two touchdowns, so a huge night from him. Obviously, you know, a few big chunk yardage plays, the 35-yard touchdown that he had, uh, and then obviously Terrell Timmons opening things up. You know, Devin Carter, I thought, played really well tonight, too. Five receptions for 62 yards, uh, and then – Obviously, Trent Penix coming back. He did have three receptions for 25 yards, most notably that six-yard touchdown. So, your thoughts on on the way that the guys got open, especially late in this late in that stretch? Because, I mean, MJ Morris didn't really seem to have a ton of time to throw early on, uh, and guys weren't really getting open when he did have the time either. Yeah, I think that's one of the concerns for me going forward. The offensive line tonight, you know, I hadn't watched it back yet, obviously, but they really struggled picking up blitzes and, and things like that. And, and there it is. That's that's what really matters post-game-wise, especially after a win. But uh, you know, yeah. hats off, they, they hung in there and gave him some time um, in this late second half. I mean, I think, again, going forward for me, it is – pass to set up the run i think you've got to be more aggressive we know that they are limited at receiver that's no there's no question there um a guy like terrell timmons could play a big role down the stretch he still has to get stronger needs another uh year in thunder strength and conditioning program but you cannot teach speed and they desperately need some on the outside um again I, and i think if you look at mj spread the ball around tonight kind of took what the defense gave him and also took some shots. Uh, so I'm, I'm just impressed with that. Uh, it doesn't get easy because you've got you host yeah. Wake Forest next week. And again, Corey, you're going to have to throw and probably throw a lot to keep up with Wake, let's be for being you know honest here. So yeah. you think they took the training wheels off tonight, they're going to have to be off for four quarters next week. Well, yeah, and that brings me to the next question. Here's uh, from 919 Wolfpack. He said, do you think our coaching staff We'll keep letting MJ cook or was the playbook mostly open uh, because we were playing from behind. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. And I, the next very next thing he said is exactly what you just said. When he need MJ cooking <laughs> against Wake for sure. Uh, thanks in advance. Yeah. So that would be, you know, my next question here is, you know, how, how much more do they allow this to happen? <laughs> like how much more do you go into uh, the playbook to try to open things back up? Because you saw MJ can do it. You saw him be able to do it tonight. Uh, you know that he can pass deep down the field. Obviously, you have to get your receivers open. But, man, you know, you saw it, a, a little bit of a different offense there when they needed to. You Like you said, like you just said, and like uh, 919 Wolfpack said there, and I think a lot of people feel the same way, you've got to do that for four quarters against Wake Forest next week. You can't just rely on your defense. Yeah, I think that's kind of a double-edged sword, though. If you think about it, the last thing I think NC State wants to do next week is try to get into a track meet with, track meet, uh, with Wake Forest. Uh, you get into a shootout with them that's probably not going to end well for State, and especially with a true freshman quarterback. But at the same time, you do have to be aggressive. You have to take some shots. Wake's not – they don't have a good defense. That's well documented. So I think there's going to be some give and take. You know, I don't know what the ideal number of throws for MJ is next week. It's kind of – if you look at it, Corey, you don't necessarily want him throwing 40 times, but if your run game is not giving you anything, you may be put in a tough spot. Uh, but the last thing you want to do is, is get in a track meet with him, like I said. So it'll be interesting to see how they approach the game. What do they do um, in the first half especially? Because they cannot afford to get off to the start they got you know, off to tonight or they will get blown out of the building uh, next week. Um, they're going to have to you know, play good offense for four quarters and that's something that has not happened this season yeah i agree with you there sorry i had to move again uh people who are watching this live can see me moving but uh trying to make sure that it, we can clean up the area behind me so um but yeah i mean again going back to that i think the biggest thing that i took away from this game was the fact that you do now have a downfield 
passing threat. You know, Terrell Timmons obviously being a guy that, again, a true freshman, I don't think you can expect him to be a consistent player, you know, every single every single time out. But that's going to motivate other guys too because Devin Carter, you know, after the game he had today, I think that's going to end up leading to him, you know, probably being a little bit more of a threat as well. Um, you got to have him down the stretch. I yeah, mean, exactly. It, you got to have him. I mean, Bayer Thomas and him have got to play well every game. The state's going to have a chance to win. Yeah. Um, and one thing that I did want to say, I mean, like, I know that obviously you had to move away from it in the, the second half. But, like, again, I just feel like there probably should have been a little bit more of an emphasis on the run game uh, early on. I know Jordan Houston wasn't getting going much. But hopefully, if you do have somebody that's throwing down the field, it does open things up a little bit more for the run game because you've been – I mean, teams have been loading the box on NC State for the last several weeks now at this point. Uh, Jordan Houston only had nine carries for 31 yards. I mean, again, not a, a couple great – key runs late to his credit. Uh, yeah, exactly. really helped. Again, Corey, though, you, t- you can't talk about the run game without Demi, Sum- Demi Sumo Carnaby, and they desperately miss him right now. That, that to me, makes this win even more impressive because – after Jordan Houston, not taking anything away from the guys who are in that running back room, you are very, very limited. Um, and, again, it puts a lot of pressure on Jordan. So, I, I don't know about Demi. I'm, I'm not overly optimistic about his prognosis going forward. Obviously, I will probably hopefully find out more this week. Yeah, it doesn't seem like um, he's going to be back – like maybe he'll be back, you know, down the stretch. You'd love to have him against Wake Forest, but uh, it does sound like something that's going to happen. If you can even use him as a decoy, now. I hate to say that. If you, I mean, yeah, really just having him out there uh, on the field is going to would make any defense. You have to put, you know, somewhat somewhat of a focus on him if he's on the field. Yeah, and Kelly said he said I'll, I'll totally admit I gave up on this game. Before Shame on you, Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> well, Kelly lives in Wisconsin, so I know he didn't at least leave the stadium like a lot of people did uh, in the third quarter, and they're probably kicking themselves for missing that fourth quarter. But uh, he said, uh, for whatever reason, the coaches began to trust their coaching and their players let them play the game. Uh, and he said, uh, isn't that what coaching is all about? You coach, you train, you let them – and you have to let them go. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing about it. Like, you know, <laughs> you start putting trust in MJ Morris's arm – and suddenly he, you know, rewards you with it. And I think that's something that, again, it's not only, you know, the coaches needing to have confidence in the new quarterbacks. It's not only, you know, the players around him needing to have confidence. It's also him. I mean, this is – MJ Morris has never played a full game at the college level yet. Like, this is only his third game that he's ever entered at the college level. We've got to remember that. I mean, he's a true freshman that came in in fall camp didn't even come in during the spring when he could have gotten some first team reps. Neither did Jack Chambers. So these guys are both brand new to the system. So it's going to take a little bit of time for either one of them to really get going. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the that's the biggest thing here is you hope that he can he can continue to have some success. Uh, and I think again, this this gives a lot of people a lot of confidence moving forward, even in what was a really ugly game. That yeah, I mean, I I, I posted after it was twenty one to three. I said. We're going to have a post-game podcast after this. Uh, any topics that you'd like for me to touch on? I'm sure the topics are a lot different than than what we're actually talking about. Some of those uh, responses didn't age very well. No, no. And some some of the people that left here didn't age very well either. Uh, I'm sure they probably listened to a nice comeback in their car on the way home, uh, not being able to watch it live. Uh, all right. And did have a question here from Sarah. She said, uh, have they said anything about Demi's status? Do we know when he'll be back? Don't know anything necessarily yet. We'll probably we'll ask Dave on Monday. Uh, you know, probably not the best time to ask about you know guys that are out for this game after the game, but uh, we'll try to get a, a more definitive answer on where things stand for him. Probably not going to get much. Yeah, exactly. We don't really ever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's that. Um, and then uh, also <laughs> Kelly said, "Thanks for doing this. It's a long night, but fans need this. <laughs> it's a mountain shine drink." Uh, and then. Uh, Jeff also said, uh, I'm working, drink a beer for me. I can't do that yet, but we will tonight when I get home. All right, so now let's move over to the defensive side of the football. Uh, You know, first half was great. Third quarter was just a lot of people getting getting beaten. First half and fourth quarter were great. If my numbers are right, Corey, they gave up 42 yards in those three quarters. The 251 yards came in the third quarter. 
They give up six yards on the final three drives. Six total mm-hmm. yards. They give up seven yards on the first drive, six yards on the next, and the negative seven on the final. So six total yards overall. And I mean, that was – We talk was, about it every week too, Corey. I mean, in, def- in college football, in any level of football right now, it is really hard to play defense. I'm not saying third quarter was – not frustrating and tough to watch, but at the same time, you gave up 21 points. Again, that's a really tough ask right now for any defense at any level. I mean, again, I go back to a couple weeks ago, Tennessee putting up 52 on Alabama. We've talked about that. You're seeing these crazy games. So it speaks to the veteran leadership of this group, um, the resilience, the way to just put those plays kind of behind them and move on, and they're going to really have to ride this defense. I I think everybody's encouraged by NJ, for sure. Um, But at the end of the day, uh, this defense is what's probably going to help them, you know, reach their goals. (laughs) Sorry, I've got everybody. We're uh, we're cleaning up behind me, so I'm trying to stay (laughs) – I'm trying not to mess up here. Um, All right, so back to the defense. I mean, yeah, I just – looking back on that third quarter, it was – it was very difficult to figure out exactly what was going on there. And a lot of it seemed like, you know, just deep passes down the field, but it was, it was wild because that was something NC state hadn't given up the entire first half. I mean, that was something that NC state was not struggling with. And that Virginia Tech didn't even try. They didn't even try. And then Grant Grant Wells rushing, you know, you, he breaks contain and rushes for a touchdown. It's like, all right, we're seeing all these things. And I think that's what, that's what kind of got in the head of NC state fans. It's like, Man, these are these are all the things that we've talked about all year long that NC State can't get beat on, and that's exactly what's happening. I mean, what did you see in the fourth quarter that that changed? Because, it, I, you know, and some of it might have been the confidence of, hey, we can do this now. You know, <laughs> we can if we make our plays, this offense might be able to figure things out. Even though it was only twenty-one to ten, uh, you know, after in the first drive of the fourth quarter, right? Yeah, I think it's twofold. I think first, uh, they just started playing more fundamentally sound. They were able to, you know, start getting more pressure on the quarterback. And let's be honest, Corey, the offense gave them some some help. You know, yeah. you don't, when you don't have to feel like when you go out there and you feel like you literally have to get a stop every single time, or as Dave Dorn said at halftime of the Syracuse game, we need the defense to score. When you can just focus on doing your job, being fundamentally sound and just playing together and kind of within yourself, it's amazing what can happen. But, again, I I attribute that to the veteran leadership on this team. You have to have a short memory playing defense right now. I mean, like I said, everything in football is geared towards the offense. It was a brutal quarter, the third quarter was. But, again, the guys kind of rose when you needed them to. They stood up. And I think that says a lot about this team. Again, is it realistic? We've talked about this off you know, camera, is it realistic for you to be able to really ride your defense the rest of the season? Probably not. But NC State's defense is good enough to where if they can just get average to a little above average offense, they should be in every game. Um, And that's really all you can ask. You have to think that this is a huge confidence booster for MJ Morris. And again, uh, for the defense, because they had some help tonight. Dabbling here to uh, a big way after Shaheen battle stumbled a little bit. Yeah, that that to me, Aiden White's done that a lot this season too. He's you really know, he's, good. He's one of the best coverage guys for NC State. He's also got really good size at the cornerback position. And that's the thing is Shaheen Battle has been a really good DB for NC State. And I do feel like the one, the 80-yard pass downfield was just a, a miraculous let's throw it was just a wild like I couldn't I couldn't believe they actually completed that pass and it was one where you know shy shy had good coverage uh all the way up until you know it gets a little bit of separation right there at the end of the pass like I don't even think uh the receiver knew it was coming to him and all of a sudden he turns around and it's like oh it's right there on him as shy is going down to the ground so uh that was a really tough one but you know I do feel like the defense figured things out there in the fourth quarter and there was some you know, we, we talk about the play calling on the offensive side of the football, but it seemed like, you know, with NC State finally able to get something going offensively, it really seemed like the, the play calling on defense got a little more exotic. You started seeing some more blitzes. You started seeing Peyton Wilson 
uh, got a big, he got two big sacks tonight. You also had Drake Thomas with a sack tonight. I just felt like that was, you know, that all, all it really took was the offense getting something going for everybody to get a sense of confidence. I mean, did you see, I guess, I guess my question is, you know, <laughs> how much more exotic did the defense get there too? Because that was, that was something that I noticed. I mean, we'll have to go back and watch the film, but it was like, man, the, the play calling got a little bit better on the defensive side of the football too. Yeah, I think guys just started to make him, make him plays. I mean, NC State's defense played about as bad as it's capable of playing in the third quarter. Um, so you had to think yeah. they were going to bounce back. Did I expect them to play that well down the stretch? I really wasn't sure. I don't think anybody knew what to expect. The way the game was going, I, I'm just looking at some numbers right here. I think the difference in this game, Corey, defensively down the stretch with being able to pressure the quarterback. NC State has struggled mightily to get to the quarterback this year. They finished with four sack, or let's see, four – Four sacks, um, nine quarterback hits. Those add up. I mean, that really takes a toll on a quarterback when you're getting hit. And there were some shots. I mean, he had a couple times where you're talking Drake Thomas coming full speed, Peyton Wilson full speed. Um, not many people in college football that are going to hit you harder than those two. Um, so I think it took a toll down the stretch. And, you know, he's looking over his shoulder. He got sacked six times against Miami. This yeah. was another rough outing, especially, again, like I said, down the stretch. It really felt like, Corey, to me, the, the defense fed off of the offense. The, the, it just everything turned once they scored that, that first touchdown. And it's crazy to say that the way the season has gone, that the defense fed off the momentum of the offense. But I, I really think that's what happened down the stretch. Yeah, and – I put the stats together earlier uh, in my post game takeaways, and Peyton Wilson and Drake Tom, Drake Thomas, and I put Morris in there. Lord, I need to fix that. Uh, but Peyton Wilson and Drake Thomas had a combined 15 tackles, three sacks, one pass breakup, and three QB hurries between the two of them. I mean, that's those are those are pretty big stats when you think of the fact that you know neither one of them coming into this game. Uh, had a sack this season. So, or actually, I think I think Drake Thomas did have one so far this season, uh, but Peyton Wilson didn't have a sack heading into the night. So, just again, you know, this was a – we keep saying the confidence that the offense got to build off of this one, but I feel like the defense got some confidence even after that third quarter uh, where they're able to kind of figure out, like, all right, we, we, can, we can do this too. We can figure this out. We can get this thing going. They get that, you know, that three and out – and all of a sudden things change. So uh, this, you know, all of this, as much as people were miserable in the third quarter, as much as this. And it was, was miserable. I mean, this is this is how bad a guy like, you know, Grant Gibson, he's not a guy that gets like upset or, you know, cusses at all. Uh, but apparently I, I can't remember who it was that said it, but uh, when they were going up and down the sidelines, like even Grant Gibson was cussing. He was so mad. He was like, get let's get this together. Um, and they finally and so did. That's what you need. I mean, I yeah. hate to say that. The way this offense has played, it's been inexcusable. You can put some of it on the play calling. But, Corey, at the end of the day, guys got to go out and make plays. And they just haven't been making plays. It's been a collective issue. Uh, I don't think any one person deserves all of the blame on offense. And if they're going to get better, Corey, it's going to start with the leaders. And Grant Gibson is a tremendous yeah. leader. So, Kudos to him. I know that's kind of out of character, but that's really what they needed tonight. I mean, it, it is. Yeah. And, again, I mean, you brought it up earlier, too. I mean, I think I think when you look at, you know, the, the comeback that NC State had in this one, you know, I think it was – I think it was 14 points that, that there's only two teams in the country that have come back from, from multiple 14-point deficits. And one of them is Florida, or one of them is uh, is Houston, and the other one is NC State. And it's been consecutive home games. They've had to come back from at least a fourteen point deficit. Obviously, it's an eighteen point deficit in this one, which was the second largest uh, comeback of the season. Which JMU was the only other team to do that so far this season against App State. So, really, just a a massive uh, change, or you know, massive comeback for NC State really puts things into perspective. Um, and then Thomas. Thomas Evans said something that I, I think I mentioned earlier, you know, that they went up tip a little bit more uh, after that first TD. And yeah, I mean, I think again, that's really all it took was, was finding that confidence. And I mean, you, I, I keep saying the confidence aspect, but it's like, man, you just, you didn't feel any of it from this team. 
I mean, even though the defense was getting the job done in the first half, it's like, you know, the defense is probably thinking, how much longer can we hold on to this thing? Like, how much longer can we do this? And Virginia Tech makes some changes coming out of the first half. Well, they had to be gassed, too. I mean, because yeah. there was nothing happening offensively. I mean, it was a bunch of – seemed like – Three and outs or very short drives, and there was four punts. So was there four punts in the first quarter? <laughs> there was at least three. Um, you know, that just – you can't have that. And I think yeah. that, Corey, going forward is going to be such a huge deal for this team. Getting off to better starts, and that's probably going to mean being more aggressive with MJ, whether it's moving him around in the pocket, taking shots downfield. He gives you an element of – and he, I guess you could classify him as a dual threat quarterback, but MJ, when he's moving, he's looking to throw. And just the, the ability to extend plays is going to be huge um, for this offense, especially when you're talking about a receiver group that has struggled to create separation consistently. Uh, again, so I, I think all, all in all, I think you've got to be encouraged. Again, Corey, you win by one. This would have been a disastrous loss. Yeah. And Children said something here, too. She said, this season is not what I was hoping for, but these boys never give up. As a Wolfpack fan, we've learned to watch to the very last minute. Shows the character of our team. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, and I, and I wrote this in, I wrote this in my post-game takeaways, too. Like, like, this game makes NC State. I know before this now, given that they really needed to come away with a win in this one, uh, you look at the fact that, that for them right now, they still have four games remaining after this one. Uh, you have four more opportunities to, to prove yourself and get to a better bowl game. Uh, and, you know, I know that it's, it's wild to say this, but, like, I mean, they have a chance in every single game if they can keep that, that kind of confidence that they can come back from – they can come back in games because I don't think it's going to go very well the entire time against Wake Forest. That Wake Forest team, it has a ton of playmakers. Sam Hartman – is probably going to break, you know, probably going to surpass Philip Rivers for the second most touchdowns uh, accounted for in AC history this coming up weekend. That's how good of a quarterback he is. But for NC State, you still have, you know, really, really strong and sound defense that they can hold up for four quarters again. And you have now what you feel like is a much better offense if you can get things in rhythm again. If you can get things in rhythm against Wake Forest, you have to feel like, they have a shot because Wake Forest's defense has really not been that great this season either. Yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying. I was trying to check Louisville's defense. I wanted yeah. to know that because if I don't believe they're very good, State's not going to face a really good defense the rest of the year. So the ball is in their court, essentially, to use a, a basketball reference. You have got to find a way – um, to just manufacture more points, be consistent early. I think, again, you can ride this defense or try to try to ride the defense, but to me, the last four games, Corey, it's going to be more so on the offense. You're going to have to put up points. Uh, getting off to good starts is going to be critical for this team. I mean, and let's be honest, Corey, if they can just get some stuff going in the first quarter or even the first half, it will take so much so much pressure off this defense and the defense will be able to play more freely. Those playmakers that are all up over the defense will be able to you know, just make plays and do the things that they need to do um, to help NC State look more like the team you hoped it would be prior to the season. Is it going to be with the injuries and all that what you probably hope? Probably not. But, again, there's still a lot in front of this team, not be the Sunshine Crew, as crazy as it sounds, Corey, if they could somehow – win three of the last four that have a shot at 10 wins they could win the last four i know we're getting ahead of ourselves there's still a lot this team can accomplish yeah exactly and i think that's exactly what dave Jordan's going to reiterate with this team over and over again is you keep this 15 game home winning streak alive you want to do that next week against wake forest and and try to do that again i mean obviously it's going to be a really tough mountain to climb uh with you know the offense that wake forest has but you know, I, I don't think you can necessarily count this NC State team out, regardless of the situation. Uh, and, you know, at this point, I wanted to ask you, too, I mean, because when you look at what MJ Morris was able to to do today, one of the things that that I was, you know, that I was looking at very closely was that, you know, multiple throws that he had were, you know, 30 plus yards down the field. I mean, and, and one of them nearly completed. He threw a really good pass to Terrell Timmons that Timmons nearly came down with that would have been 30-plus yards as well. 
that was the thing that we hadn't really seen a ton of this offense. I know we keep you keep talking about you know the explosive plays over and over and over again, and and one thing that we had said you know looking back at the plays is you know even when you did have some deep routes, guys weren't either number one getting open or the ball just wasn't being thrown to them. It was you know settling for checkdowns, settling for for some smaller plays. <clears throat> Obviously, some of them are designed screen plays that that we've seen over and over and over again. But do you feel like because of the fact that they got down so big in this game and it, and it changed the way that uh, they were able to do it. Do you feel like you'll see some more downfield passing moving forward? I don't think you're going to have any choice. I'm going to be honest. I just think that they're going to be up against it. There's a lot of tape on NC state this year. Uh, not so much with, you know, obviously MJ Morris playing quarterback, yeah. but the running game has been limited. Again, this is not just this year. This is last year. It's really struggled. If Demi Sumo Corner Bay is limited down the stretch, which looks like that may be the case. You hope not, but I mean, you just got to start throwing the football. Um, I'm, I don't know. Ideally, do you want MJ throwing the ball 40 times a game? No, but that may be what it takes for this team to be competitive. And it may be what it takes for, to put this team in the best position to win. I'm just not overly optimistic about the running game, and that's just not has not not a lot to do just with the running backs. It just seemed like the offensive line was struggling to get a push, and that's been a reoccurring theme as well. Um, and it's and it's not all their fault, Corey. Let's be completely honest. When you have no threat of a downfield passing game, they're going to creep up. Uh, I think that was another big reason NC State was able to hit some key runs late. Just the ability it showed to throw the ball. So maybe you like I said throw to set up the run, uh, take some shots, take them early. I'd like to see a lot of first down passes for MJ. I think that's a prime down for him. Not a lot of pressure there. Again, there's a lot for NC State to build on tonight, and uh, it starts with MJ Morris. He's going to have to grow up quickly. And what I would caution fans, now that there is tape on him, uh, you know, teams are going to throw a lot at him. They're going to try to confuse him. So there's going to be some ups and downs over the next four weeks. There's going to be some learning experiences. Uh, but that'll make him better as as time goes on. Yeah, and I mean, I know we keep saying that I, there's not a ton of confidence in the running game, but I will give a shout out to Jordan Houston for those those fourth quarter runs that he had. I mean, there was you know, there's those are obvious running downs, and he was able to find a way to be able to pick up the yards that they needed to be able to convert some first downs, uh, and and you know, put away this game. You know, in the fourth quarter alone, I'm looking at it here. A rush seven yards for the first down on uh, on third and four, and then he rushed for another five yards on third and three to be able to put the game away. That, I mean, you know, not a ton of yards for him tonight, but again, a big reason for that is because you think of the way the first half was going. Anytime you're going to run the ball, whether it's a quarterback or running back, they're going to be loading up the box and ready for you to run because they don't trust in anybody's arm at that point. Once MJ Moore started making people believe in his arm, you have to respect it. And you have to start kind of dialing it back a little bit and, and figuring out exactly what you can do. And I felt like that's where Jordan Houston uh, had a little bit better of a game. Almost 60 total yards for him. I think it was 59 total yards between the pass and the run for him tonight. So a, a good, you know, overall game for him. But um, yeah. and Chris asked me, he said, did you move rooms or what's happening? Uh, yeah. I have to move every once in a while. The room that I'm in, they have to change the trash cans. Everybody's Tremendous doing. athleticism on your part. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so there's that. I'll be cutting this out when we actually release the podcast. Uh, but um, the last thing I wanted to do here before we wrap things up, uh, we'll talk about all of this even more in, in stories, and we'll talk about it on the podcast on Monday night. Uh, but it is already past 1230. Let's hand out the, uh, let's hand out the, the stars from this game um, or the helmet stickers, whatever you want to call them. Who do you got offensively? Yeah, I mean, I think you know where I'm going because you would go here if you, you were picking first, but you're such a gentleman, and I appreciate that. MJ <laughs> Morris coming out party for him tonight. Again, it's one game, so we need to kind of, you know, just be cautious because there are going to be some ups and downs over the next, you know, four weeks. But, I mean, I couldn't be more impressed with a kid that was thrown into this position tonight. I mean, he answered the call, and he was sensational down the stretch. All right, and then uh, I wanted to point out, obviously, Thayer Thomas. Oh, yeah, he was great, too. I mean, I, I just – He was he was that reliable guy that you needed in this game, you know, 118 total yards. And let, let's be honest, there's quite a few 
uh, early on. He lost he lost two yards on the first play. He only gained one yard on this four, his third catch. I'm looking back through it now. One yard on his fifth catch. But then you started seeing the chunk plays pick up. 18 yards, 16 yards, the 35-yard touchdown that was an absolute dime from M.J. Morris. That was one of his best throws he had all night. Uh, and then an 18-yard reception that was all him. I mean, the penalty was called back because it was ruled that he caught the line, he caught the ball behind the line of scrimmage and ran the entire 18 yards on a screenplay. One of those finally worked out for NC State and it resulted uh, in the the game winning touchdown. So, you know, hats off to uh, hats off to, to Tim Beck for you know believing in his playbook and uh, and keeping that one in there because we haven't seen it work much, if at all, this entire season. Uh, but that you know that screenplay across the middle ends up working out for NC State in that one. So, you know, again, 10 catches, 118 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, you know, MJ Morris is one thing. He does he does a great job in this one. Quite a few throws down the field, but when you need that reliable guy and you need that guy that can pick up a first down for you and make a tough play, Thayer Thomas continues to be that guy. So, defensive side of the football, who do you got, man? Drake Thomas uh, was an absolute monster tonight. Uh, I mean, just with from blitzing to playing the run, coverage, eight tackles, one sack, tackle and a half for loss, and two quarterback hits. I mean, if there's a lot of if you know you talk about we talk about NFL scouts all the time, and this linebacking core all probably has a chance to play in the NFL. You talking about a guy that over the past two seasons has helped himself among NFL scouts. There's there's few and far between probably in the ACC, uh, more so than Drake Thomas. I mean, I think two two years ago people were, you know, worried about him being limited, blah blah blah, this that and the other. Well, he goes out, gets in the best shape of his life, drops some weight. I mean, I, he's just he's a warrior, man. He really is uh, a lot of fun to watch play. As the game went on, Corey, he just seemed to get stronger. The rest of the defense guys also seemed to get stronger. It is just uh, a lot of fun to watch him play. All right, well, I'm going to go with the other linebacker then. I'm going to go with Peyton Wilson. Uh, you know, seven tackles for him in this game, two and a half. Not tackles. a great penalty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, that was a little ticky tack because yeah. he was inbound still. Yeah, I mean, you know, he engaged inbounds, and I said it right afterwards, and, you know, I, I know a lot of people blew me up one way or the other because uh, I think a lot of NC State fans felt like it wasn't a penalty, but I did see the play afterwards. The, the throw to the ground was unnecessary. I thought he engaged inbounds, but, yeah, you can't do that afterwards. Uh, but overall, you know, he had eight tackles – or he had seven tackles in this game for a total of 10 yards because he had three that were for a loss. Uh, one that was minus seven yards, one that was minus two yards, and another was minus eight yards. So he finished with you know a grand total of 10 yards allowed on the tackles that he made. Uh, unfortunately, one of them ended up <laughs> resulting in a penalty out of bounds. Uh, but, you know, Drake Thomas, again, being the great teammate that he is, makes a sack a couple plays later uh, that, that flips the field for NC State, forces them to punt. Uh, but again, he had another QB hit, nearly had another sack in the game, uh, and then a pass breakup too that – if he makes that reception, I don't know if you remember this one, but he, he batted one down that was thrown right at him. He puts both hands up, bats it down. I'm looking at it like, man, if he makes that reception, he's 10 yards and a pick six. So uh, maybe maybe next time when he watches that one back, he's going to go, maybe I should try to catch that one. But uh, at the same time, makes a big play. Uh, that's a, you know, again, those are the types of things that, that help flip that momentum uh, for NC State after a really tough uh, start to the second half. All right, so we held out the, the helmet stickers. Michael, did you have any other any other takeaways from this one that you can you can take moving forward uh, for NC State over these next four games? Uh, now that they try to not only have a bowl game, but try to get maybe up into a tier one discussion for a bowl game. Yeah, absolutely. I think the big thing is is you knock on wood seem to come out of this game relatively healthy. You get a couple extra days, being that you're playing on Thursday, coming off a of bye week, which. Good schedule deal here. You're going to need it to prepare for Wake Forest. Um, you hope that maybe a guy or so, too, that is, is out due to injury can come back next game, but you may be riding with what you have, and uh, that's okay. I think you're just looking for improvement week after week. It'll be interesting to see NC State's – we know what they're going to do defensively, but their offensive approach, I think, is something to watch next week against Wake Forest. Again, you don't want to get in the shootout with them, but at the same time, you have to be aggressive and take your shots against a vulnerable defense. Yeah, one of the only things I'll say 
continue to do is try to cut down on the penalties. I mean, eight penalties in this one for 65 total yards. There's too uh, many. There's yeah. just too many. Ooh. Yeah, and again, you know, some of it, I know people were saying it earlier, the pass interference calls. I, I didn't agree with – the pre-snap uh, ones are the ones that kill me. Yeah. I mean, it's just you can't have them. And these are veterans, Corey. These guys have started for three and four years, and you're playing at home. I mean, there's just no excuse for it. You don't want to beat a team down who made such a comeback. But, I mean, you know Dave Doran is probably sitting in his office thinking, why do we do this week in and week out? Um, and at the same time, I don't think I've ever seen anything like Virginia Tech tonight penalty-wise. I mean, it was just yeah. crazy, the number of – False starts they had. Ten um, pre-snap penalty. Ten, oh, ten false terrible. starts. Again, ten that's starts. something that if NC State could – to me, Corey, that's, they have to clean that up if they're going to, you know, win these games down the stretch. If they could just cut the penalties in half, it would be so much easier for this offense. It would just give them the boost that I think would help them, you know, make them significantly better because they seem to come at the most inopportune times. A lot of them seem to yeah. come on third down. Uh, and you just – it's really tough for an offense to overcome it, much less an offense led by a freshman quarterback. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, the biggest thing that I take away from this one, again, uh, MJ Moore's performance puts NC State in a, a position to feel more confident moving forward. I mean, I'm looking at it now. Let's see, he completed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve of his last 14 passes in this game – three of which resulted in touchdowns. What about defense, too, Corey, before we go? Yeah. One of 11 on third down for the defense holding Virginia Tech. And, and I'm not saying Virginia Tech's offense is a juggernaut by any stretch, but anytime you are able to hold a team to yeah. one of 11 on third down and only 10 first downs all night, uh, that is really impressive stuff. And, again, you subtract the 251 in the third quarter, and I think in the other three quarters they had, what, 42 yards? I mean, that's that's getting it done, man. It really is. Yeah. And, you know, you have to – I'm not saying give them a break to have a type of quarter like that, but, you know, I think the offense was due to help them out, and it did. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, I think that'll just about wrap this one up. Michael, I appreciate you as always. Um, I think I, I got to most people's questions on here. I'm sorry if I didn't. Uh, but I appreciate everybody for jumping on. Thanks for kicking it with us, everybody. We appreciate y'all staying up too. Yeah, whether it was on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, we posted all those different places. Guys, do make sure that you check out Pack Pride. If you're listening to this, make sure that you go to packpride.com. Join to be a, a premium subscriber. We have a lot more content uh, for, for VIP. We talk a lot on the boards about different things that we see. Uh, we'll try to get it all out on these post-game podcasts, but – We'll, we'll see a lot more as we look at it over the next few days. So uh, thank you again to everybody for listening. We will talk to you again soon.